Hello all, I am Chandra Thapa from Cyro Data 61 Australia. Firstly, I would like to thank Pranit for organizing this nice workshop and giving me an opportunity to share our works with you all. It's been a while working on distributed collaborative machine learning, including federated learning and most especially split learning. And I'm more than happy today to share our works on a split fit that blends the federated learning and split learning. This joint work with MAP Chamikawa and Said Kamtape, both from Data61 Saito. Uh, besides, I will highlight our results on separate works, which is an evaluation of federated learning, especially the federated averaging and split learning for the Internet of Things. So this is a uh, separate work uh, and joint work with the uh, Yasun Gao and team within the Saito and SKU uh, University, South Korea. This is the content for today's talk. I'll start from the uh, introduction of split fed learning, then discuss the default privacy in this learning. Then we go to add more privacy in the framework, present some experimental results, including the performance of fed rate learning and split learning in the Raspberry Pi implementation, and conclude by highlighting the challenges and open problems in the split split fed learning. Uh, so uh, as we know, in a split kind of learning, we have a full network, network here means the model. Uh, then the first step is to split the model into multiple portions. In a very simple setup, we split into the two portions. One is client-side model portion, and the second one is server-side model portion. Now, this is our distributed setup. As for an example, uh, three clients with their local data and one main server, and ready to perform distributed machine learning collaboratively. We send the client-side uh, model to all the clients and server side model to the main server. Now the training in the split fed learning happens as follows. Each client performs the forward propagation of their client side models independently and in parallel. This is opposed to the split learning where sequential training happens across the clients, which force the clients to be idle as it needs to wait other clients to finish its training with the server. Then they send this mass data to the main server. After receiving this mass data from the clients, main server starts for our propagation on the server side model separately for each client. So we can assume this can happen in the parallel, but in our implementation, we did it by multi thread programming. Then in the back propagation, else the gradients of this mass data, and, uh, and then um, these are uh, the respective gradients are transmitted back to the clients. Upon receiving the gradients of this mass data, each client performs the back propagation, and this completes the one forward backward propagation. And we say it one uh, global epoch if all the local data are considered. Now, how to ma uh, maintain the model synchronization? So we can start from the server side, motivated from the weighted averaging. Weighted averaging, we perform the weighted averaging and make the server side global model. But now, how about the client side? So we introduce a fed server, which is responsible for the client side model averaging. That is again the weighted averaging. So client sends the models or the model guardians, then fed server sends back the global model or global guardians. The main server can be fed server here, but in this case, all the operations must perform in the encrypted form, something like homomorphic encryption and which does not allow the main server to learn anything about the client side model updates. But for simplicity, we keep the separate fed server at the client side. The training happens as described and we call this approach the split fed version one. Why version one? Uh, we now go to this point. The question here is, do we really require to perform weighted averaging to the server side models? And the answer seems not. So we have an alternative way this is what happening in the split fed learning. Uh, how about keeping the only one copy of the model at the server side? Let's say this. Uh, first, all the clients send this mass data to the server. Server starts for our propagation on the clients one mass data, and then sends the back propagation, uh, and then sends back the guidance to the client, client one. Then the updated model starts forward propagation to the client's two smash data and so on. This is what we call the split fed version two. So far, we see the split fed learning approaches. Now let's discuss the default privacy in this learning. 
we know this is a model to data approach. We send the models to the clients or the data custodians rather than pulling out the data out of them. So this maintains a level of privacy and data control limits within the data custodians. So the next point is obvious. That is uh, the model privacy that we obtain from the network split. Client and server doesn't know uh, about the updates of their site and uh, difficult for them to guess a properly designed network, then it is not even possible. There are still rooms for the information leakage. Firstly, uh, it is during the client-side model synchronization. Each client will receive the global client-side model. And how we tackle to this issue is we do this by applying the differential privacy measures at the client-side model training based on the approach developed by Abadi. Secondly, there can be the client to main server leakage from this mass data. How we tackle this issue is by applying the calibrated noise generated based on the Laplace distribution to this mass data. And we have not done more analysis on this part, but we can argue that my version of this mass data enables more privacy than the original mass data. Now it's the time to see some experimental results. So uh, the experimental uh, setup is IID case in our scenario. So that means equal number of uniformly distributed samples in each client. These are test convergence costs for federated uh, split and split fed version for various number of users. For this data set, uh, that means the HAM 10,000 data set and then the model that is ResNet 18, the performance is not affected by the number of users of 200. But in other experiments, for example, Linnet 5 on FMNST, higher user means a slower in convergence. So in another separate experiments with LXNet on HAM 10,000 with the 1,000 users, we have something different observation. That is test accuracy sharply fell around 20% after 20 epochs, both in split and split fed version two. We are other system around 60. So here we see the model and data dependency in the test performance. As the main motivation of the split fed is to decrease the training testing time, we have done the theoretical analysis in the paper, and this is what we observe in our experiments. We see four to six times faster training time uh, for the split fed version than the split learning if you go for experiments with five or more clients. The right figure is what we have after applying the privacy measures, that is differential privacy, client side model training, and sending the noise mass data. So more than noise means the slower in convergence, and this is what we expect. In this slide, we are talking about our separate work where we implemented a split learning and federated learning on Raspberry Pi kits so to see their performance. So our performance metrics are training time, memory uses, power consumption, temperature, and communication overhead. So in our experiments, we found that bigger models and data, site are, uh, data sets uh, are challenging in terms of com uh, computation and time for the IoTs. So we limit our detailed observations and choose the 1D CNN model with the first two layers running on the Raspberry Pis and ECG data set. For the time over, as uh, sequential training among the clients have higher than the federate learning. For the communication, again, the federate has negligible overhead to the split learning, all due to the data size dependency of the split learning. More data means the higher communication between the client and server during the training of the split learning. Uh, for the peak power and temperature, we can see the advantage of split learning to allow running few layers at the client side. Its peak power and temperature is lower than the federated learning. So these metrics have um, high importance in the practical settings. Uh, for more results, uh, please see the reference. This is uh, my last slide. So we have one book chapter that reviews the current activities in the split uh, learning space available on the archive. And we mentioned these challenges and open problems there as well. So as we know, uh, it is challenging tasks to find the core layer uh, in a split kind of learning, which includes the split fed learning, so that we minimize the leakage and computations at the client side. So it is a, still an interesting problem. Now going into the next point, so for the non iid case, extreme case it will be the single class problem. That means that each client has only one uh, class of data set. Split and split fed approaches doesn't work uh, appropriately for some data set, and we are in our observations with the soil condition data set, it doesn't run at all. So that's another uh, future avenue. 
As the split enables the machine learning on the resource constant environments such as IoT, communication efficiency is another important issue. So we need to look into this direction as well. Last but not least, studies on the various attack scenario and split learning is another potential resource direction. So we need more studies to make the split learning robust here. And uh, this concludes my talk today. Thank you very much.